This is Phantom 105.2. Ready? From Dublin, Ireland, this is a Phantom 105.2 podcast. For more information, head to phantom.ie. And joining us in the Phantom studio is none other than Mr. Nicky Wire. Hello, Nicky. Hi, yeah. You're all right. Grant, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I've just done Sweden, London, uh, Glasgow. Belfast and Dublin in about 26 hours. Oh my god. What are you doing gigs wise? You mean? Yeah, we started in Sweden, then tea in the park. And it was just a lot of. It was a. It was a bit of a faff, as we say back home. Oh my god! Because I know that I know that you, you've on, literally only just got here. Yeah, we got here about an hour ago, and uh, but that, to be honest, well, listen, we makes really, no difference now we're here. We appreciate you coming in to talk to us. Thanks a million, Nicky. It's great to get you in. No uh, worries. Nicky and the band are on stage at half five, so we won't keep it too long, sir. That's all right. Yeah. Now the last time I was talking to you, uh, Nicky, was in a very swish hotel here in Dublin <laughs> uh, back in September. Yes, I remember. Just before the release of Postcards from a Young Man. Yeah. So at the moment you're touring. The album, obviously, the singles have been taken from the album, and I read recently that you you had been planning to take 2012 off. <laughs> Here <right>? we go. <laughs> well, I, I I have a scenario for you. <laughs> for anyone who may not have heard Nikki's quote, he said that we will play one gig next year on the Jubilee on the Queen's Jubilee, so that people won't have to listen to Prince Philip for an hour. <laughs> Did you or did you not say that? I Nicky did Wire? say that. I did uh, at the iTunes gig because I thought that's the biggest global reach of any <laughs> gig we're going to do. So here's the thing, right? What if this happens? You're playing, let's say, Cardiff's Millennium Stadium, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, and you go, yeah, there's 75,000 people here who have the same mindset. They don't want to see that rubbish either, okay? And next thing, you look up in the Royal Box, <laughs> right? And... You see Prince Philip and he's rocking away to if white America told the truth <laughs> oh, for one day God. its world would fall apart. I think he he got to contemplate suicide suicide in in that scenario. Well, here's <laughs> kind of ruin everything you It's a bit like Morrissey felt when he found out David Cameron was a Smiths fan. There you go. Yeah. He wasn't happy about that at all, was he? It didn't no. go down well. Or what if they started heckling? Say him and, him and Charles were there like the two owl lads from the Muppets and they started heckling. Play PCP. <laughs> I, uh, repeat after me. Yeah. No, I'm sure they'd have better things to do it's just the tedium more than anything you know it's just the at the saturation we've had everywhere we go it's just never ending go to Istanbul and it's just got the bloke from Monaco getting married you know it's just <laughs> is there no escape well you know the way for the Queen's 50th Jubilee they had a big concert in the in the um yeah are you expecting a phone call <laughs> <laughs> we did get asked to open the, the Welsh Assembly but we refused because they were there oh really you, okay. were, you took a stand Seven. then yeah, yeah it was I mean it was just a no-brainer it's not it's not a personal thing, it's an institutional thing, you know, it's just uh, just the way we are. I know we seem like relics now, you know, people do look at me quite oddly. Well, I'll put it this way, Nikki. I'm a bit disappointed that you've you decided more or less to take next year off, because, Christ, if we need a band like the Mannix, we need them now. <laughs> Thanks. Do you not think like you have a duty? I was you know. I do. You can no, do, I do. do all the hoovering you want next year. Well, please do a few gigs and bring out a new album. <laughs> well, I think that you are, we do feel a duty because there's no I know there's you no do. young bands who, who, who do anything like we do anymore. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's just like I said. Sometimes it seems really old fashioned. We'll it, come on tonight, and it, it, we we do feel like we've been around twenty years. But you know, first time we played Oxygen, you know, there's probably kids in the audience who weren't even born. Yeah. Do you mm. find that at the gigs that you're getting like a yeah. new generation? Yeah. Yeah. You get you get mums bringing their kids yeah you know Mannix fans and then you've got the next generation yeah. being brought through yeah. brainwashed so, so you're not going to take all of 2012 off apart from one day really and uh, well we have got a lot of writing to do you yeah. know we want to make a um, really we want to push ourselves to make another record so uh, I think that the, the older the older you get in the band just the more frantic the pace gets because you realise you know you're running out of time well it's not even that but like Jesus it'd be a lot of work to rehearse for one gig wouldn't it you'd sort of be going <laughs> Jesus why a three weeks rehearsal I don't know I'm guessing three weeks rehearsal for one gig let's just go and do a tour <laughs> I was just wondering if anyone would turn up really of I course did, they uh, would the whole royal family would be there <laughs> there's a lot of them yeah there is a lot of yeah, them we'd have to pay them though <laughs> Well, listen, Postcards from a Young Man, uh, Last when I was talking to you last, uh, I had said that it was just chock full of absolutely fabulous melodies. Yeah. And we did say at the time that it was, um, that the Manic Street Preachers, and I don't mean in any way to sort of box you in like this, but there's always like a sort of a, a tragic album followed by a sort of a happier album. Um, and that just seems to be the way it goes. I know it it's, does. I know it's not obviously, you know, well, we have to make a happy album now. But th- with your mindset and the mindset of Sean and James, you know, if you were to start writing for the next album now, what sort of stuff do you think would be at the forefront of your mind? I think we just got to sacrifice a bit of our usual sound yeah. for different avenues. You know, I think 
uh, we're kind of immensely proud of postcards. I think to pull it off, you know, in our forties, tenth record when all really all our contemporaries have they've just split up and reformed. It's the easy way out, really, to just come back and play a lot of nostalgia. And we yeah. tried as hard as we can, you know, to still kind of be relevant and. Um, that does take its toll after, right? There's a, there's a time when you've got to satisfy yourself yeah. and become a bit self-indulgent. You know? Well, that's interesting that you say that because I'd say a lot of times bands would say, yeah, well, we just write for ourselves and if anybody likes it, yeah, you know. I don't like that. It's just sort of a standard. That's line. when you describe yourself as an artist instead of yeah. a band. You know, and we've never done that. When, yeah. pe- when you become an artist, you're just basically doing it for yourself. So do you put yourself under a lot of pressure then to sort of write uh, sort of the types of song, not that people might expect from you, but that, you know, you'd never write maybe a very, very simple love song do you go that, that that's no. not very manix or do you just write what what you're feeling at any given time no in all honesty the pressure does come from we you know people, when bands moan about record company pressure and all that kind of stuff it's always self-inflicted with us you know we've had plenty of freedom over the years we've never really used it because uh, i think if you feel you still want to communicate you just feel duty bound to that you want to get that across to people you yeah. know and uh, as many people as possible Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but, you know, when it does work, when a design for life or a tolerate or, you know, you love alone or it's not war, it's just such a magical feeling Yeah. for us three, you know, um, yeah. um, for when Richie was with us. It's, it's different for other bands. I just, I guess they get satisfaction from different avenues, you yeah. know. Well, the only reason I'm, I'm keeping on banging on about it is because I don't want you to take 2012 off. <laughs> no. I, always, I always tell people, and I think it's the same with the Manic Street Preachers, I don't know what you think about this artist, but I always think when Springsteen is active, the world's a better place. I agree completely. You know, so I think, you know, we need the Manic Street Preachers to be given out about stuff because, Jesus, come over to Ireland and write your album. It'll, <laughs> it'll take you a week. Well, we've done a few albums in, in um, Grouse Lodge. In Grouse you have yeah, well, come over and just, just look at the news for a week and you go geez this is great to hell we're taking the next year off we well a double album out of this i mean to be honest there's the creative juices there's so much to write about at yeah. the moment you know mm-hmm. in every country you go to it's just chaos <laughs> <laughs> you know whether it's turkey well turkey was actually pretty stable but you know if you've been to greece previously and you know you come to ireland you see protests back home you know yeah yeah that's why i don't understand why a bands you know kind of lack inspiration because there's just so much out there to write about well here's the f- I, know, I don't want to keep it too long I would talk to you all day but um, oh, you probably wouldn't talk to me all day but, uh, <laughs> no, you know me I can talk I know you can and, and that's brilliant I've got to put my makeup on but I know here's one final question for you okay why do bands take five years to make an album you guys don't can you tell no. me why that happens do you know I think it's a really tough one I've always we grew up with bands bashing them out, really, you know, we we like a rock and roll version of the Fall. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just never plowing on through the misery and just making records. Yeah. I think it's all down to about the amount you want to communicate. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, bands, I mean, we are different beasts. It's, it's a miracle we've stayed together. When you, when I, like I said, I think of all bands I loved growing up, like Sway, who I absolutely love. I mean, they just haven't done anything for ten years, and then they reform. So it does show how tenuous the whole thing. We just played with. We were headlining in Istanbul, and Sean Ryder was playing um, with us. And just to see someone who I'd seen at, as like a 15-year-old. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's. I, I think it's because we known each other since we were four or five years old. That's yeah. what's made us. Yeah. Maybe. You know, we just know there's no egos allowed because I know everything about James and he knows everything about me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's some uh, embarrassing stuff. And, <laughs> and in, a, in a band that spends so much time together, that's a very lucky thing to have. It is. Well, Nicky Wire, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to come. And I mean, Nicky's on stage in less than an hour, so you know we really are very grateful. Cheers, Nicky. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And remember the, the famous old adage: there are no years off in the world of rock. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Phantom 105.2. You've been listening to a Phantom 105.2 podcast. For more information, head to phantom.ie.